You know what I need to get? I need, I need to get like a rubber with a little pipe at the end and like a little bag I could just pee on myself. So, 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 so you just, so you just want to walk around with piss on you all no, day? No, no, in a bag on my leg. You know what? I ain't even tell y'all the funny shit. Last week, I peed on myself a little bit. <laughs> when we was running. When we was running, I had to piss so bad. We was running and I pissed on myself down my leg a little bit. We went in the bathroom. That's why I let you go first, because I had to get a napkin and wipe that bitch <laughs> off. When I went to jail, they give you white draws. You had dookie stains the on them. The worst way. decision in the world is a white pair of draws. <laughs> what up, my guy? <laughs> what up with it? Everything good? Yes, sir. <laughs> It's shaking. It's shaking. <laughs> What's good, Coach? Hey, you know he just got good. off the bike. Good, good, good. You know he I just put a little bit of work. <laughs> and he got off the bike talking about one, two, one, two. I'm gonna be honest. I see he just rode the bike over here. He rode the bike here. <laughs> <laughs> he don't sweat then neither. I'd be pissed off. The worst thing he do to you, like you really be into it. You know, he didn't got you out the third. You know, I try to do it like no, him. Right, I didn't swung the hand like this. And then he gonna get up talking about. Catch your boot, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hold on, what are you talking about? Calculate the rest. Hey, man, you just told me that I need to be going, and why are you stopping, coach? <laughs> Nobody coming to see you dance. Get sexy on him. Come on now, something like he understands. Something yeah, like, yeah, like Coach, you don't even sweat. Nah, I sweat. I a little sweat. bit. Poquito. Nah, I sweat. When we get done with class, there's a whole puddle there. Trust me. Got it, got trust it. Me, trust I guess that's the magic. Yeah, that's yeah, you know what I mean? You got to come take a live class in person. People be thinking it's fake oh, sweat. Wait, I'm like, wait, wait. So a live class in person riding with you? Yes, sir. Like I said, we just opened the studios back up to the community, so now people can come in uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and take classes in person live. So how do we get the pivot on Peloton? <laughs> I mean, we just put it out there to the atmosphere, and when we're done with this, we're going to send an email, we're going to get the pivot to Peloton. Can, who, you, can who, you drink and drive? Because this is what he's going to do. Who, bro, who is we? <laughs> I don't know, why y'all, what he said, I don't know why y'all work out so hard. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Come I'm on retired. Now. Cool. We try to pay rent. Man, play, man, play to be on business called breathing hard. You grind it, grind it while you're hugging. Hey, ride, ride, ride with AT. Yeah. That's my man, guy. y'all look crazy. We got to get you on it. <laughs> I get on the happy day. <laughs> That's what I'm going to get on. Hold up. Limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh. For the pivot, for the pivot people who don't know, this is Alex Tucson, AT. Mr. One Two uh, of Peloton, uh, just a superstar, like honestly, man. And this was something uh, Shannon, who's who's here, she's appeared on on our show as well. Wow. She kind of put it in the atmosphere, and like that day, I sent you a message, and obviously uh, this all started. We got Chan; he's working out already, as you can see. Freddie T, me. You know how it is, y'all. Uh, continue to subscribe, whether it's YouTube, Apple, uh, Spotify. Also, make sure you hit the like button. Like I already told y'all, we like comments. You've learned that Freddie T reads them all. So when I was going through the YouTube comments, I saw a lot of Freddie T's uh, just holler at me. And the same as Freddie T always says, man, anyone can podcast, but not everybody can pivot. Um, and that's what we're doing. And I think the reason you're such a great guest for our show is the like the initial thought was talking about people pivoting, right? Yes, and the, the decisions you make to make your life better. Yes, sir. And obviously in reading up on you, and you always had like this military vibe, but it was always so disciplined. Yes, sir. But you actually went to military school. Yeah. What was behind that and what were the reasons you felt like you needed or your parents felt like you needed it? Yeah, growing up, my parents, um, Haitian immigrants, came to the United States uh, mid 80s, not knowing this English language, doing everything to sacrifice to put my brothers and myself in a position to succeed. I was that kid that voided all that. I was a kid that went against the family rules, family structure. I've been kicked out of every school I've ever been to, which sounds crazy to even speak about it now. Um, my dad was like, listen, you're either gonna be dead or in jail by the time you're 25, so we're gonna figure out something structure-wise to make sure you locked in. And originally his first thought was to ship me off to Haiti. Like, well, we're gonna send your ass back to Haiti. Yeah. And my mom was like, that's a no-go. We're not gonna allow it to happen. So my dad being a military guy, growing up in the Navy, my uncle served in the Air Force, he was like, all right, what's the next best option? Let me get his ass out of at least this environment, this local environment. Sent me to military school in the sixth grade. So I went, uh, went with military academy, middle of Missouri, sixth grade, growing up around individuals that don't look like me, don't talk like me, don't walk like me. And that's kind of how it started. That's where that discipline and foundation started. So from sixth grade to 10th grade, I was in the middle of Missouri, isolated from family, friends, people that I grew up with, and just reorganizing the structure of life, literally breaking down the fundamentals and the discipline and understanding structure and accountability, 
communication, all these different intricate things. And you add that 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, you get this product right now. So I tell people all the time, and that's why I shout the military so often, military school changed my life, saved my life. And I, I, like, I hated my dad for it at the time, but now we look back and I'm like, yo, thank you so much for even just having the vision and being like, let me get you a little bit of discipline that, that can take you a long way in life. Well, what, what was you getting kicked out of school for? Dumb shit, like fighting, cursing out. I had, a, I had a problem with authority. And it was one of those things my dad was so tough on me at the crib that if somebody else outside the crib said something to me, I'm like, man, what are you talking about, bro? My, my dad, my dad be spanking me like, you going crazy. Like, we grew up in a Haitian fa- household back in the 90s. It's a little bit different than the times are today. I got my ass whooped growing up as a kid, like. Hey, see, you threw hands, though? I wasn't supposed to, but like, you gotta realize, we got my ass up at home. Somebody yeah. gotta get this work. <laughs> somebody yeah, gotta get this work. I, started, you know I got two older brothers, I can't fight with them. Like, so somebody had to get this work. But it was just one of those things, I just struggled as a kid, just understanding who I was and finding this, like, this certain just direction in life. So my thing was just to retaliate just to, as a defense mechanism. And I, I was a good kid. Everybody loved me, teachers loved me. I just always did dumb shit. And that's what got me kicked out of every school I've ever been to. In mentioning, you know, how those things changed you and the reasons you had to go to military school, how did that shape you, though? Like, being that young, being away from home and and having those situations where people don't talk like you, people don't act like you, and obviously being first-generation American as well, how did some of those interactions shape who you are today? I mean, without those interactions, I don't know where I would be today, without question. Definitely provided me a sense of direction and accountability in life. I think within everything that I do in life, there's a form of military school present, whether it's the way I make my bed in the morning, hospital corner, whether it's the way I interact with individuals, I say, yes, ma'am, no, sir, hold the door open. It's just, my, it's just everything that they built in that time frame in those four years, I can't walk away from it. It's like what you guys learn in college, what you guys learn in the NFL, these are things that like are instilled in you. There's individuals who I haven't seen in 15, 17 years that I grew up with in military school that could call me today and we talk like we saw each other yesterday. It's because we've gone through something that nobody else has gone through at such a young age in life that I can never uh, repeat or duplicate. So without that, I don't even know where I would be today, on honesty. Would you ever send your kids to military Hell school? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, I would not. <laughs> you just praised it. Like, it but, changed but listen, your listen, life. I was one of them. I, I got out OK. <laughs> I got out OK. <laughs> yeah. You know what it was? For everything that it did positive for my life, there are some just accounts of where like my ability to cut people off without even thinking twice stems from military school. In the sixth grade, where you get shipped off into the middle of nowhere, where you can't speak to your mom and dad for an entire year because that's the, that's the, that's the program. That's what they signed up for. That's kind of how I am now, where it's like, oh, somebody walks out of my life. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm just, I'm built for that now. And I realized, like, I'm trying to work against that because that's not the healthy way to live. That's not the healthy way to live at all. So I'm trying to do a better job of making sure I stay in communication and not breaking off from people like that. But aren't you supposed to take negativity out of your life? Like, is 100%. it? I'm gonna say, but that, that no, you saying question. you're running away from it. That's a skill when you can be like, this isn't good for but me. Some, I'm it's gone. A, it's a defense mechanism for me to not run towards it in the sense of address it. Mm. So sometimes I'll, I'll actually would be like, all right, cool. I just won't speak to you in the sense of like, I don't even want that confrontation. I won't even bother with it. And that stems from military school being like, you have to be walk away from somebody like that. And that's the problem I'm having right now. So I'm trying to do a better job of making sure with the friends, family, relationships, I stay in communication with people. I don't just snap away and just like disconnect from people. So I'm, I'm working on that right now in life. Hey, Alex, let's pivot back real quick. You mentioned well, it was a decision whether to send you back to Haiti, mm-hmm. your mom was against it, Absolutely. or military school. And we know the, Haiti's, uh, the Haiti of the 90s, and Haiti tends to get a bad rep. Mm-hmm. Why, why choose military school over your country? You know, because if you paint the picture, Haiti's really beautiful, Absolutely. whether it's the 90s or now. But it has a, a, a negative connotation in a, in a lot of sense when, you know, when people speak on it. Uh, looking back, do you think you would have said, hey, you know what, let me go spend some time in Haiti? I think it would have benefited my life now, looking back. And I say that because I went to Haiti for the first time in um, 2018 when my grandma passed away. And just being in that environment, seeing where my mother grew up, my father grew up with having all my cousins around, it was one of those moments where um, when you understand where you come from, you know where to take it. Right. And that was the first point in life where I was like, oh, this is my core, lat- yeah. this is my value, yeah. this is my foundation, this is what my parents had to sacrifice to make sure that my brothers and myself were put in a position to succeed. And I think about it now, if I maybe got a glance of that at a younger age, would I've taken life a little bit more seriously, would I've had a little bit more discipline, would I've been a little bit more locked into anything that I had set in, as a goal. So right. I'm, I think my dad was doing it in a way to give me a culture shock to be mm-hmm. like, 
listen, you're here as a blessing. Like, you live in America as a blessing. Don't take this as for granted. Right. My mom was like, let's not send him back to where we came from because we did so much sacrificing to get him out. Right. My dad was trying to, let me, let's give him a hint of what we did. My mom was like, we did so much sacrificing not to even have him, let him have to see that. So there was a little bit of uh, miscommunication on just like the understanding of it. I thought it was like, send you to Haiti, don't talk to you, leave you alone, just fend for yourself <laughs> kind of thing. I look back now and I'm like, that would have definitely given me a lot of accountability and understanding yeah, of who I am. Yeah, and I just want to just jump back to your day job with Peloton yes, and read a quote. You said, every day I get on a bike is another opportunity to honor my last name and validate both my parents and grandparents' sacrifices. Yes, sir. Your family is your biggest inspiration. Yes, Speak sir. to that. Military school, I'll, I'll, let me pull back for a second. You get identified by your last name, not your first name. Nobody calls you Alex, nobody calls you, that's a race. They call you Mr. Tucson. When you first get to military school, they call you Rat Tucson. Recruit at training, then your last name. So when you get identified by your last name for so long at a young age, it starts to just lock into you. Okay. I played uh, basketball for all my, all my life growing up. They never called me Alex on the court. They never called me AT, they called me Tucson. For some reason, my last name just held a certain level of value that I was like, all right, this means something. We go to Haiti 2018, now I understand it. Yeah. I know it meant something. I know how people treat my father, how people treat my mother. I know it meant something, but when you go to Haiti, you understand it and you, you see where it came from. You saw the grind that it took, where that, where that name means value. There's a level for me now where it's like, every time I get on the bike and I push a pedal stroke, I'm trying to validate the sacrifices of the people that came before me, Right. validate, the sacrifices of the ones gonna come after me and make sure while I'm on this planet, I could do right by the people of everyone that I interact with. So you're talking about basketball. You played basketball your whole life? Yes, sir. That's, why, was the you, that's why you got the MVP, MVP, right? Yeah, I played football one year, I got cracked, and I was like, I'm, well, I'm good, <laughs> I got cracked. It ain't you for know, everybody. I, man, I played football in Missouri, military school. You're yeah. talking like Corn Fred Brothers out here. I'm talking, them, yeah. Yeah, them boys are big. <laughs> I came across a receiver, barely, I'm talking first year football. You know Haitians, they don't let kids play football like that. I ran a slant, I caught the pass, I was hyped to even catch a pass. You know, I ain't never played football, I'm telling I'm like, right. I'm hyped to even catch this. I catch it, I look up, linebacker, boom, cracks me. I get off the field, I said, coach, I'm going to the basketball, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I was thinking of basketball, baby, I can't do this, man. Hey, they can, I hey, can't listen, do this, man. It's more fun to practice that you ain't got no helmet on, so oh. at least the fans, at least the fans <laughs> can see you, man. So I ain't even mad at you at all. You know, you talked about playing hoops in, yeah. in military school, and you know, obviously you did decide to go to college, but you said, you even said publicly, it wasn't for you. Not for me. Right, you, you thought that was something that you needed to do. Listening to you throughout the rides, you talk about coming from dark places. Yeah. And you've said publicly that that was one of those times you felt like you had a depression and it ended up leading you to coming back home. Can you take some of the people who only know AT, yeah. right? Know AT from the bike, the inspirational quotes, the constant energy of what that time was like for you in your life? So that was uh, coming back from military school, coming uh, back to my hometown of East Hampton, New York. Um, that was a culture shock for me because now I was isolated from my friends that I grew up with for four and a half somewhat years and then getting thrown back into high school was like the new kid on the block all over again. But now it's a kid that went to military school, so he's wired different. Like, kids were like, yo, stay away from homie. He went to military school. Like, you would've thought I went to jail or something. Like, <laughs> You're right. the, the energy that you, they were like, oh, he's different. So it took me a little while to try to even, like, calibrate and fit in or just, like, have people understand me. So, like, the first two years when I got back home, I was just completely lost. That's where the basketball team at East Hampton kind of played a, uh, a huge role in my life. Because that was the first time coming out of military school where I had accountability, communication, teamwork, structure. If I fail in my classes, the star uh, point guard would be like, bro, we need you today. We got a game time. What are you talking about? You're not playing. So that level of, of teamwork was the only light in my day at that point. Wow. Now, mind you, when I got kicked out of military, I got kicked out of military school. And when I came back home, me and my father didn't speak for two years. So I'm in the house with him, walking by him every single day. This goes back to my point of the ability to like cut people off and not speak. Me and my dad walked past each other for two years straight and never spoke. Wow. wow. And that's when I started getting into a dark space. I mean, we're family. Like, I got two older brothers, my dope-ass mom, PhD doctorate, brother went to Brown University. So there was a vibe in my house. I come home from military school, it's just dark. Because I'm dark. I'm the, I'm the baby of the family. Now it's just eerie. Now me and my dad fighting after not speaking for two years. My mother's like, damn, what's going on? My brother's out the house living in Brooklyn. I went through a point of just not knowing what the hell I was going to do. And being like, yo, I got two years to fin figure this shit out before I go to college. If I'm going to go to college, what the hell are we going to do? And the only thing that was going for me at the time was basketball. So that was like the sunshine of my day. Like knowing I had basketball practice at three o'clock and I was gonna be with my coach till five, I was like, yo, can I stay an extra hour to get shots up? I'm really not trying to go back home right now. Like this is my sink, this is my peace right now. Right. If it wasn't for the East Hampton basketball team in that time frame when I came back home, like again, I don't know where I would be today. And I gotta give credit to all the kids out there that, I, that was my captains, my teammates. That shit changed perspective of life.
we went, we were 20, 27 and two that year. We won a Long Island championship. I never won shit in my life. I feel like not even being funny. Like I failed out of class. Like I just never won any. That was the first time I had a sense of, damn, it feels good to win, yo. Right. You put a little bit of effort into something, you could do like, shit, let me try this one more time. Right. By God's grace, I, I passed high school. I go to uh, New England Tech for audio video production. Essentially, my dream job was to be an ESPN cameraman. Like, if you look at my high school yearbook, it says dream job, ESPN cameraman. So I went to a school for audio and video production to try to learn that stuff. I went there to buy time. Mm. I didn't go there to, for school. I went there because I was like, yo, I, I just got kicked out of military school. I went two years without speaking to my dad. I got accepted into a college. And at that point, he was like, "Not I'm proud of you, but like, uh, all right, we doing something now. Right. We doing something. Like, there was a level of like, all right. So I was like, damn, I got to go to college not to disappoint pops now. Right. Meanwhile, I was like, I'm not even mentally structured. I don't have no self-accountability at this point. I lost everything from military school. Right. I know I'm about to go fuck this up. I know I'm about to go fuck this up. So every day I woke up in college just waiting for the day of like, when's the day you're going to drop out? When's the day you're going to drop out? And I tried. My first year of college, I tried. I put my effort in. I learned a lot. That second year came, my car got stolen, and everything just went downhill from there. Like, the rug got swept under my feet. And I was like, damn, I just disappointed my family. The car that my dad got me, because he was somewhat proud of me, got stolen now. How do I even call Pops to tell him the whip got stolen? Wow. I called him. He was like, hey, you bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you bullshit. How you been going, man? I'm right. like, nah, for real. Like, this shit got stolen. Right. And he was like, yo, send me the police report. I remember sending him the police report and remember him calling me back like, yo, your life is going to forever change. And I don't know if that was a threat or if that was like a, yo, how you're moving is going to be, like, you're, you forever change your life based off how you're moving. Right. Car gets stolen. I drop out of school. I come back home. And he literally was like, yo, you don't got no job. You ain't in school. Are you wasting time? Like, yo, you want some piece of shit? Get the fuck out the house. Like, like not even a blink. It was like, a, we got to a fight. He was like, yo, you a piece. Get the hell out the house. Wow. And I, that was the day I was like, oh, he meant my life was going to forever change because when I come back home, I ain't going to be moving the same way that I was moving when I left. Right. So I went from that point and then, shoot, I slept on my best friend's floor for a year and a half. Uh, mop floors at a company called Flywheel Sports. Yeah. And that lady, I, I love her so much to this day. My mentor, one of my closest people, Ruth Zuckerman, she looked me in the face one day and was like, yo, you got God-gifted abilities. If only you just put a little bit of effort in. A couple weeks go by, I'm, in the, I'm in, the, in the studio mopping floors, and I'm just listening to these instructors teach now. There's like a little fish hole, and you can just hear them instructors teach, and they playing that real hip-hop music, 8 o'clock in the morning, an all-white East Hampton demographic. I'm like, how the hell is going on? Like, right. who co-signing this right now? <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> Who, like, this is crazy. And one day I came into work and I was like, yo, I was completely joking. I said, Ruth, I want to be an instructor. I, I, I got this. I went to military school. I could count rhythm. I played instruments. Like, I got a little bit of structure. Like, I can project my voice. Like, just teach me what you know. And I think I can do this. She looked at me straight in the face and was like, if you give me two weeks of your time, we could change your life. Wow. Mind you, I'm broke, sleeping on my best friend's floor, walking to work, running to work, just trying to mop floors to be like, I got to prove my dad wrong in some kind of capacity. I don't care what it is, right. my number one goal right now is to prove dad wrong. Well, I went from mopping floors for a year and a half to teaching classes. On my 21st birthday, she was like, yo, you got you special at this. This isn't something that like, you're just an average instructor. She was like, if you really put your effort into this, you could change your life, the, you could change the world. She goes, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send you to Dubai right now. Go out to Dubai, go train the instructors out in Dubai. I'm like, yo, I was mapping floors last week. What do you mean go out to Dubai and train? Like, what is you talking? This is out of, what language are you speaking right now? Right, right. I went out to Dubai and I, in that moment I was like, oh, all right, this is a career, this ain't a job. This is something that I could, if I lock into, this is 2012, 2013, there wasn't no young black male teaching indoor cycling at that time. That wasn't a thing. Like it was predominantly female industry or, no, yeah, predominantly female industry at that time. Definitely wasn't no young black men teaching at all. And that's when I said, all right, bet. Let's, let, let's do something. Let's not for real. It was like, there's no young black man here. Let me try to tap into a lane that has never been tapped into before. I have a certain level of military background with discipline. East Hampton growing up as the first Haitian American family to live out there. Then we have just a level of people that I, I love. I love humans. I love interacting. I love see, seeing people's um, emotions. I love taking people from a negative space to a positive space. Like, I'm in a negative space. So I'm trying to find my positive space too. So shit, let's go through this together. Right. I should change my life. We, we do two and a half years of teaching at uh, Flywheel, 25 classes a week. At the time, the industry standard was 12 to 15. I said, I need to prove dad wrong. Give me 25. Right. She goes, that's impossible. I was like, nah, I need, I need to prove my dad wrong. Give me 25 classes. My classes every Monday and Wednesday were 8.30, East Ham 8.30 9.30, East Hampton. Get on a, on a bus, two-hour bus ride to the Upper East Side, 4.30 Upper East Side. Get on a train, head downtown, 7.30, 8.30 downtown. Get on the bus, go back to East Hampton, and do it all over again. Right. 
I didn't know no better. I was sleeping on my best friend's floor. I was broke literally last week. My dad just said I'm a piece of shit. At this point, it's the only option I got. Did that change you and your pop's relationship? Like, how are you guys now? We're amazing now. And I, 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 I can fast forward and say that that's why I got so much love for Peloton. And that's why within every member that uh, I interact with, I'd say, they say thank you to me. I'm like, nah, thank you. Right. People don't understand that's the why. And it's because April 4th, 2016, this is my first year at Peloton, my first full year. I was walking out of the studio. My dad called me for the first time in my life and said, yo, I'm proud of you. That's dope. A lot of people won't understand, y'all understand this as being young black men. When your father calls you and said, I'm proud of you, bro, that was the ultimate milestone in life. I, I literally broke down crying because that was the day I was able to go from existing in life, trying to prove my dad wrong, to now I could live my life to prove myself right. Mm. That was the pivotal point in my life. We talk about pivot, that was the ultimate pivot point in my life. My dad calling me and giving me that self-validation of like, yo, I'm proud of you. Because I searched so long for that from him, that not receiving that for, what was it, 22 years? You know what I'm saying? 22 years without hearing I'm proud of you, and you hear from mom every day, I love you, I love you, I love you, right. you're great. Like, mom, I'm trying to hear from dad, though. Like, Is it extreme, though? Like, I know you're saying it, it, yeah. it made you, but that was, did your dad go a little too hard? Nah. At the time, as a kid, yeah. But now he broke me down so well that nobody could break me down anymore. He did such a good job of like, I'm gonna make sure I break you down so society can't break you down. And that's where my dad's a critical thinker. Like, you would yeah. think, like, that's a crazy thought process, but now I look back and I'm like, Yo, y'all can't say nothing to me, bro. My dad said I'm proud of me. He done broke me down so much as a kid, per like intentionally, to make sure I can't be broken down anymore. Because one day he's not going to be here so he could continue to give me this education and this understanding of what it means to be a black man growing up in America. He's like, yo, I'm going to give you the resources and the tools. I'm not going to be here your entire life. So let me do the, the work now. That way, when I'm not here, you're set up for success. So when we look back 20, 30 years later now, it's like, yo, we did it. As a parent, you got to prepare your kids for life. You got to prepare your kids you for need, life. You, you don't got to be their friend. Exactly. Yep. My dad was not trying to be my friend, my buddy at all. Yeah. And I give him so much love and respect for that, for real. I got that tough love, dad. We usually talk about, you know, your greatest pivotal moment. I usually get tasked with, mm -hmm. you know, asking that question. But as we're going here, um, I see the theme is changing. You said changing my life. Yes, sir. But that's what you're doing now. You're changing other people's yes, lives. Sir. You know, through physical conditioning as well as mental conditioning. And I, I've heard you speak to that before. Because when I get on your class, I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. But you show but up, though. I, you got to show up. Yes, that, that's exactly you what you up. have to do is show up. But mentally, you got to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Speak to that mindset in which you're trying, you're giving back, you're changing lives now. Like, I hate being cliche about this, but like, no, it's all good. I don't have it a job, I have a passion. And we're speaking about this off camera. It's like, I get paid to be myself. Mm. Like, that's the thing that people don't understand. Like, I'm really me. What you see on the bike, off the bike, in the house, out the house, how I talk to my, like, that's me 24 seven. And I'm going through a daily therapy session. Like, I think people tend to forget. I came into this to prove my dad wrong and to find my own level of light in life. In that process, I saw other people receiving that light that I was providing. I didn't think I was giving anything to people. I thought I was just trying to, I was trying to get on the bike, push pedals, make some money, prove my dad wrong. When I came to Peloton, that's when I realized this is different. This is a different space you're playing in now. You have an opportunity to be in a public platform, to be in the households of millions of people across the world, not just the country, the world. I think that itself is a responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Every class I've ever been in, every class I've ever taught, because I wanted to be a pro athlete my entire life, the mindset was to push these pedal strokes like a pro athlete. I wanted, I, my dream job, you know, I want to play in the NBA. I ain't no six foot four, like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be, you gotta have some God gifted abilities. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't put no effort in to like, go to college and play basketball, so, Everything that I've ever done on the bike has been with intent. Every class that I've ever taught, every song that I've ever played, every transition, every way that I took has been with the mindset of an athlete, but also bringing in the soccer mom, the father that works in corporate, the individual that's trying to start their fitness journey. How can I bring everybody in to make this the most even level playing field of all time? And I think we've done an amazing job thus far in it. You're just changing lives. And really that's what it's about. Cause when I get on there, I know I, I had a period where anxiety was kicking my ass. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and sometimes you have to wake up, you hop on that bike. Like Channing says, I hop on it anytime. We're in a Zoom meeting with the Pivot. Yeah. I'm on the fucking bike. I really hate when you, you know do that, saying? too. <laughs> I hate the way you sound. <laughs> That's his fault. Well, he, 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 he get that unmute. He be like, oh, uh, 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 so what they talk about uh, with this but, deal. I be like, bro, what is that? episode? You know, but you got to get it. 
<laughs> the thing is, you got to get it when yeah. you got to get it. You got to get it when you and, get it. And if we have a scheduled meeting, and if I'm going through an and, and the analytic moment, yeah, Chan, you know what I'm saying? Then I got to hop on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see. What happened? We learned in big words. <laughs> Damn, Freddie, what happened to you? Andy, we got the big dog in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so funny. Like, but listen, no, it's life changing. Yeah, listening to Fred talk about anxiety, I think the entire world experienced a high level yeah. of anxiety in 2020. Yeah. Um, you know, it's COVID, it's the pandemic, uh, obviously social justice yes, and social injustice was, was huge on a lot of our minds. And I'm about to give you a little bit of my naivety. That's another Cheers. ACT word. I truly thought so Peloton started in 2020. Oh, wow. Right, because I was just like, man, what a, I was like, who is this freaking genius? What's his name, uh, Klein? I was like, who is this genius that decided to put a bike out that you could do at your house <laughs> during COVID. I was like, this mother late, but he got I was like, I was like, I was like this mother effer gonna be rich as hell. <laughs> you know, but then I realized I was stupid. But like during that time was when it seemed that Peloton instructors became stars and then became role models. And this is at a time where your your guys' visibility was as high as anybody's in the world because that's what people were going yeah. to for anxiety, for a, an escape. And you took time during um, 2020 to take to Instagram a few days after George Floyd uh, was murdered and just share, you know, that your life wasn't no effing hashtag. Yeah. And in a moment where it was, okay, AT can continue to build his stardom, what was it about you, your upbringing, your feelings, what you were going through that made that an important thing for you to do? That was probably one of the toughest times in my career. Um, and I say that because joining Peloton late 2015, early 2016, I was the first black instructor at the company. So it, it was more for me than just signing and just having a new career. It was more like you have a certain responsibility to open these doors for other people to walk through after you walk through it. The term, those who can must, um, I stand by that. And after the George Floyd, um, Maud Arbery, and just that heat of social injustice and Black Lives Matter movement, I went through a dark time and people, a lot of people don't realize that. And I say that because I felt like I was, as the young kids say, capping, faking. Right. I was like, was I just faking the whole time? Like I had to check myself of like, I came here with the intent to be the first black person in a lot of these people's households and inspire them to be like, let's look at, we, we view you different, let's look at the community different. Mm -hmm how I articulate myself, how I teach. You love me, you respect me, respect my people, show love to my, my family. Like, why is it that I only get the love? And growing up, you think being the cool, token black guy is like a cool thing. When you mature and you get older, you realize that's the total opposite of what you want to be. That's actually like the furthest thing from a positive impact. Like, mm -hmm. you're accepted, but your people aren't? I'm the only one. Yo, man, that's, yeah. that's, that, that hurt me. That hurt me, and that's what it felt like during that moment of people being like, yo, AT, what are you talking about? Like. We love you. And I'm like, yeah, that's the problem. You love me, but you don't love my community the same. And I just felt like, and I got so much love for the Peloton community. Let me be very clear about that. Like, without them, I, I'm not here today. I think it was just my responsibility and my, um, my call of duty to just help remind them that I'm not far removed from where Amon Arbery is or George Floyd was. And I just had to paint them a reminder. And the only way I could paint them a reminder is like, I drive my car. I'm in New York City, I'm an athlete. The minute I cross that Bro uh, Brooklyn Bridge or Williamsburg Bridge, for some reason, I get viewed differently. I don't, I don't, I don't want to put a, a name on that because I wouldn't do that to myself, but I get com treated completely different. And I tell people all the time, like, what would happen or how would you feel if you heard I get pulled over, a situation happens, I'm not there to teach your class the next morning? Mm. That's the only way I could help resonate with them. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just not there. Not because I didn't show up, because I'm literally not there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think for people, I speak about my mom all the time, my family all the time. I'm like, I'm 30 years old, bro. I still text my mom sometimes when I get home, like, yo, mom, I'm home safe. And that's not because I need the validation of, like, yo, mom, I'm home safe. It's to put her at ease of, like, anything can happen at any given point from when I leave the crib to when I go to work to when I go out to when I come home. Anything could happen. I think people forget making it home safe is a milestone. I, I, like, a lot of people don't understand that. Like, wow. It's a blessing. It's a blessing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it was in that moment, I just, I kind of got lost and I was like, all right, I got to give the community something to help them understand where I'm coming from, my perspective, um, so they could just open up their eyes, open up the aperture to, to understand more. And because I have this platform and because you're already listening to me, 
at that point, it's my job to provide you some sort of experience or information so you can understand a little bit more from this perspective. And I think, I mean, I hope we we did a, a good job. And I, yeah. I pray. What, I hope you we did, did, man. With, with that, with that, was there any fear of pushback? Because Without like question. even Kaepernick. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and NFL teams addressing that as yeah. people started kneeling and things like that. Yes, you're sir. in a whole different realm, but now you're using this platform mm -hmm. to make a social movement. Yeah, yeah. Like, what what was that dynamic with the employers and all that stuff? Did any did anything negative come of it? Without question, a lot of negative came from it. Um, I had people writing into my boss, my CEOs, uh, the leadership saying I should be fired. Um, but this goes back to why I even signed to join Peloton. And that's why I love them so damn much, because they give me the freedom to be like, no, you do what you do. We're going to support you, period. You're here for a reason, not a Like, what, what support do you need behind this, this, this statement? Like, it versus, yo, be careful of what you're going to say. Peloton jumped on your... They were the most supportive. <laughs> like, wow. And that's why it's so different. You know what I mean? Like, this is, I feel like it's one of the first corporations that give a young black man a platform to, like, speak in freedom and not be punished for it, to be honest with you. And the night before I made that statement, I called Robin Arzon, one of my close friends, um, head instructor, and this is what about like teamwork and like accountabilities and understanding who the team captain is. I made sure I put in this a sports reference. I called the team captain. That way, if the head coach called her, she could provide a response like, yo, he's not out of pocket. He called me. We already know what he's on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I called her the night before and I was like, yo, I just need to make a statement to the community. Like, and she kind of was like, why are you even call? Like, thank you for calling me, but like, you know, I got your best. It's not even a question about it. I was like, no, I'm calling you more for to let people know that like, if they think I'm going crazy, if they think I'm wilding out, just like, you're going to be the person to be like, nah, he's very calculated. And he understands what he's doing. Um, but nah, Peloton was in full support, bro. And that's why I love them so much, for sure. He, he wouldn't know that because he doesn't ride. <laughs> but, you know, re really, I want to definitely shout out Peloton, man. Cause yes, sir. It's a safe, it's a safe space. Yeah. It's all about community. Yes, they sir. got instructors for everybody. Yeah. You know, and that's what I love the most about it. And I think with that being said, you know, I love to see a, 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 a celebrity pop up Peloton times the pivot Ride, and we're gonna force Channing to ride. We're gonna get you on it. So whoever we gotta talk to <laughs> to make that happen, obviously listen, you would be. Listen, you gotta talk to me. I'm Why? not getting on that <laughs> bike. He's not gonna get you on the bike. I'm just like, yo, acting like, what you gonna do? You gonna put me on the bike and take my feet to the it's pedal? For the, it's I'm for, not riding that bike. But it's friend. for community, the people. You yeah, love the people. I right? drink with them. <laughs> he said, I celebrate post ride with you. Y'all ride, and I'm the after party. No drinking and driving on the bike. <laughs> No, no, no drinking and riding. We all play our roles, though, dog. On that bike. We all play our roles. <laughs> they can party with you after. Then they can ride with all of us. That's a key part of it. That's, that's a key like part that. of it. You know what, bro? Cross that I gotta line. ask, man, because you you talked about it. Are you better at riding a bike than me? Am I better at riding a bike than you? Or are you a psychologist? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you like you you spoke on like you you encourage well, you people. Am I better at riding a bike than you? Like than yeah, you? I've I've ridden bikes. Ride. But I, when I was a kid, I rode bikes. Me too. So. I can do a Papa Willie and all. <laughs> you got me beat, but like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you like, bro, you, you're, 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 you're world, like you say, yeah. honestly, world famous. Yeah. It sounds crazy. And, <laughs> sounds and I don't want to minimize. I don't want to yeah, diminish. Go ahead, go ahead. For riding a bike. Yeah. That's dope, is right? it about? <laughs> hey, hey, that's you know dope, right? like, But no, the question that's is like, when you oh, leave training you, camp, that, hey, when you leave training camp, you be like, trick them again. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> but like, is, is it is it about riding, or like you say, is it about encouragement? Is it about making the people feel good? Is it about talking with them? Like he's saying, one, two, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. like it's, the, the it's, energy. It's, that it's you a combo bring. of a lot of things, right? So. Um, we play a, 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 a lot of different roles within just that class. So I'm a DJ, I'm a motivator, I'm an athlete, I'm a coach. I'm all these different things, different pillars in one environment. Um, depending on what ride it is, depending on how I wake up and I feel that day, I might want to be a coach and give you a lot of motivation and stand up a little bit more and coach from the, from the bird's eye view. If I'm in an athlete mode where I didn't have my workout, I'm like, oh, I'm in the trenches with you. I'm going to hop on the field with you and we're going to really outwork this moment. If I'm in a very much, um, if I'm going through some dark shit or some positive shit in life, I'm coming in as a therapist. So like... There's days that, like, depending on what's going on in my day, I come to work in a different light. Depending on what time it is, what day it is, what class I'm teaching, um, it just really depends, man. And it's kind of crazy. Like, you said, world famous for riding a bike. Yeah. I think about this shit all the time. It's crazy to me, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I'm not even being funny yeah. to you. Like, I think about it all the time, and I'm like, damn, this is 10 years in, and we came this far? Imagine if I put that effort in when I was a kid. Like, imagine if I studied a little bit more when I was... Man, if I took basketball a little bit more serious. So, like, I think about it, I'm a little bit like, damn, I wish I could have, would have. But what I didn't do my first half of the 30 years, we're going to figure it out the next half. We're going to get it right. So The thing you have to realize, and obviously, you know, you do this for us all the time, is 
if those things are different, yeah. you aren't this Alex Toussaint today, exactly. Exactly. right? You aren't the same dude that presents on the bike and understands that today I am in athlete mode, today I am in coach mode, today I am in therapy mode. And I think what happens, and you know, I know I'm a part of TV is like, we're playing ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Every day you get on that bike, you represent you, you yeah. represent your family. And so the you that we love and that we get to see, we enjoy going through the ups and downs of your life as we are going through ours. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest. Like, I am a playlist picker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at the, the other day, I did the, I think I did the, I did the little baby joint okay. the other day. Okay. You know was what I mean? Yeah. And I was, it was hitting. I was like, and I got toward the end. I needed something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, like, I think you just don't understand, like, how people, that is like a destination mm. for people. Mm. And, you know, and, I, and what you've done has been amazing. But you mentioned your teammates a lot, yeah. and you always talk about oh, it, whether yeah. it's Cody, Robin, yeah. uh, uh, Kendall. You always talk about when you guys were realizing, holy hell, like, this is becoming a thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We on Dancing with the Stars, and we MVPs at the All-Star Celebrity Game. Did y'all ever just sit back and talk to each other like, hey, man, can you believe this? I say this, and I don't know if they want me to say this, but I'm gonna say it because it's like an inside locker room vibe. When I joined in the 2015-16, the goal was, yo, we gotta take this company public. So we just all had this like locker room thing of just like, yo, 2020. We see each other to be like, forget how your day is, 2020, 2020. Like just like lock in, like that's the goal. We have an opportunity to change the world, but change our lives, change our families' lives, change generations of our families' lives. Accountability. I can't do it without you. You can't do it without me. If you fail, you don't show up to practice. Just because I'm succeeding don't mean nothing. The team not succeeding. I need you to win. I need you to be your best self and hold it down. That way, when I'm not here, I'm not, not, I'm not teaching, the members still are getting something. That core group, man, like, every day I walk into my house, I put my feet in that, that first step. I literally say thank you to them. Because without them, a lot of that, a lot of this don't even happen. Without Ali Love, bro, like, Ali Love helped me realize my power as a black man on this platform. I didn't even understand that until she came to the company. As the first black instructor, I was like, oh, this is about to be cool. Like, right. oh, this is a lot of damn work. Right. I'm not a black woman. I can't even speak from that damn perspective. Like, I don't have the information or the tool. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Allie came and it was like, oh, snap, bro. Like, huh, North Star. And she gave me so much information and resources to help me understand how to articulate and take this vision further. Then we look at Robin, who's a business. Like, yeah. he's a business. They're not just business women. They biz big business, period. I didn't realize until dealing with her and Allie, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I'm not an employee, I'm not an instructor, I'm a walking brand. Like, yeah. right. I gotta restructure this shit. Like, I'm not just an, like, it's more than just pushing pedals. You gotta, yo, wait, hold on, time out. And that's when I realized how important teammates are. So Robin, Ali, Cody, Jess King, um, Hannah, so many of the core group, but like, yeah, they, they help me understand it's a business, man. Bro, you go out with Cody. <laughs> like, do you? I can't hang with Cody, man. Oh, I can't Cody's hang with loose. Cody, hey, Cody's boy, so wild, that man. Boy, yo, that boy different, man. I love him to death. He got a different battery to him, man. Yeah, he different he battery, wild. Bro. You got to know when to just say. Right? That's true. So you speak about teammates. This is reminding me of, like, collegiate sports, NIL deals, mm -hmm. such and such. I know you're sponsored by a lot of people. You got Puma here and yes, some sir. others. Uh, is there any a time where you've possibly ex experience like some animosity? Because everybody ain't getting all the big deals. You're saying you know, amongst the group? Amongst the teammates, because it happens. Mm -hmm. In sport, it happens in college. You said it's 55. Right. Yeah. Right. Because you're, you're, I know eight of them. You're toward the top of the list. There's, That's there's what the, I'm saying. There's <laughs> the fourth. But what about the 54th person? That, that right. Was because friend, just like, like in college, not yeah. every, the stars are getting, yes, sir. you know, the NIL deals. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we had the young guy, CJ Stroud, on. Okay. Big time, should be a you know, first rounder, right? Uh, he went and bought $60,000 worth of suits for, for his teammates, teammates with his NIL money. I love that. You plan on hooking everybody up with Puma? <laughs> I mean, because some what people might. I got to spend 60000 but your Puma for my, my people. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so Puma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that can kind of kind of float around the locker room a bit, right? That's a great question. To be honest with you, not as much as you would think. And I'm going to tell you why, because whether you're number one or 55 on that roster, at some point I had to be 55 in the space. I wasn't the first instructor. When I, like, I wasn't a top-notch dog when I came into the industry. You got to work your way up to even put yourself in that position. Not everybody on a basketball team gets deals. Not everybody on a football team gets deals. Like, everybody puts themselves in a position to. So um, you could look at it from animosity, but I don't think our teammates do that. If anything, you look at it from a level of inspiration of, like, you were able to accomplish this from this discipline and this platform, provide me the information, the resources, and the tools where I can do the same thing. Right. Um, and I look at that from, just speaking from the personal standpoint of, 
watching Robin and Allie early on with a lot of deals and a lot of outside activities and things that were like sponsorship uh, wise and being like, how do I do that? Right. I could have had animosity towards it, but I was like, share your information mm-hmm. and we look where we're at today. So. Do, you, do you go back and watch your, your, your classes? All the time. Like, do you study games? All film? the time. All the time. I, send, I have them send the clips to me. I pull it up on my, my big screen at home, and I watch every detail. And you might not know this, but I'm going to tell you this now. Before we interacted with each other, I used to watch you on ESPN every morning, not as a sports fan, but as like somebody who wanted to be on ESPN and understanding now how to articulate to the camera, then pivot to somebody else that you're speaking to, then make a statement. And like the, all these different intricate details, I'm a student of the game. Right. So I watch TV now for a completely different perspective. You used than to I watch used to. this guy. Watch this guy. This guy. I mean, I he's amazing. I watch him too. No, yeah. I'm just saying. I wanted to make sure because I watch him. I think he's awesome. No, yeah. He doesn't get enough credit. He's nah, actually yeah, called real, like the 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 goofiest of the three of us, <laughs> or the worst of the three of us. With them tight but, ass suits on. Damn, I was gonna say them suits are spy. I should get yeah, myself. Hey, them Jiminy Cricket <laughs> ass pants. Hey, AT, hey, you're the problem, AT. Hey, if you have it on, y'all. Hey, hey, when your knees, when your knees that much bigger than your thighs, you can't get you. You got Yeah, you got scar tissue. Come on now. No, but I, I'm gonna pivot back and say he was actually called the sorriest of us three. Wow. But I digress. You know, it was an Far idiot. From who, I don't know. He's super dope. Hey man, you know what? I love these DraftKings pivot watch parties. Right, and I'm really on my one, two, one, two, because we got the man, Alex Toussaint, man, one, two, one, two. (laughs) But speaking of one twos, when you place any $5 bet, football wager now, Mm -hmm. not just any bet, football wager with DraftKings, they give you 200 in free bettings only if you win. You got to hit, y'all. Got to hit. Y'all know about football all the time. Y'all got to hit now. You hit, you get 200. Now listen, we are more shaped than you are, right? So Freddie T, myself, we actually do get on the Peloton. Yeah. You kind of just sit around mm-hmm. and cheer us on. But who are you cheering on right now? And if you're pulling out your phones on that DraftKings Sportsbook betting app, who you got? I'm going to get my 200 riding with Tampa Bay, baby. You know they one of the best teams in the league. You know they're going to do their thing. I'm getting my 200 riding with Tampa. Hey, man, can y'all go somewhere different than Florida, Freddie T? I'm going to Buffalo. I ain't got to say nothing else. Buffalo. Buffalo. Hey, pull out your devices. These guys are taking the obvious. I'm always the wild card, but I also lose a lot, and I'm not necessarily sure if I should even give y'all any hints of where to go. But remember, we're going to get back with the 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two, DraftKings Sportsbook betting app. Make sure you download it. I got mine, on. Do you have funds this week? Insufficient funds again. God, <laughs> <laughs> So the thing is, you know, we talk about teammates. Obviously, by now, you know, we've gone enough through the season. People know we've partnered with DraftKings. And DraftKings is consistently trying to give you free money to go earn more money. But listening to you talk teams, here's what I started thinking. I remember, man, there's a few times now. You got to remember. What? I thought Peloton started in 2020. Okay. Right? So when I first started riding, I was able to go back years and years of rides. Yeah. And I realized that it didn't start in 2020. Because if you go back far enough, there's actually people in the room. Yeah. I was like, oh, hell, he was <laughs> talking to forgot. folks. <laughs> and I was like, he was talking to folks. But you, you stun about your teams, man. So do you have a football team? I don't have a football team. I really? Don't. I, I'm more just, uh, I, love, I love the sport in the sense of I love seeing people compete. So I don't have a set football team. I never watch football enough in my household. You got household. a hoop team? I got a hoop team. Miami Heat's my hoop team, for sure. Crib. Man, How? Man, he, 305. Why he why he why? like that? Why not? Why not? He's from New York. He got the, Do you Knicks? Know the Heat organization. He got Brooklyn. <laughs> I want to speak too much. I still go to MSG, so let me I still want to be permitted. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get beat up <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. New Yorkers are crazy. Yeah, but like with, with, I w- always wanted to ask this, you know, we are football players mm-hmm. and you know, these two were drafted. I wasn't. But we get to see people's lives change overnight. Yeah. Right? We get to see people go from not necessarily mopping the floors, but mopping the floors to world famous. Yes, sir. And I've watched folks struggle with that adjustment, right? Understanding what comes with family yeah, now, understanding yeah. what comes with being visible, understanding how to deal with new money. Yeah. Was there ever a transition like that for you or for people that's been around you in the Peloton community? Without question, definitely a transition. I mean, I was broke 10 years ago. Um, and now I'm in a position now where, by the graces of God, I'm pushing pedals. And that's why I, I thank my teammates so much. And just, I'm so passionate about this Peloton community. My goal when I joined was to retire my mom. Mm. That was the number one goal. I don't care what's going on. They say, yo, you come here, you can retire. We could change your life tomorrow. Let's change your family's life forever. 
I said, yo, let me retire my mom. If I push enough pedal strokes, if I show up enough times, we can do that. By God's grace, last year we retired mom. Bought her That's a house, awesome, put her, we just moved her out. Yes, there's a lot of change that comes with that because I never thought I would have this level of responsibility. But with that is like, you're making fun of like, oh, this man got a management team. It's like, nah, these two individuals that walked in with me today are literally my best friends that are my managers. And just having that around me in my ecosystem of like, it's more than money. These people sit at my Thanksgiving table. Like they know my mom and dad, they know where I come from. They know where I want to take it. And I watched a Kevin Hart interview you guys did and he spoke about something that's extremely identical to what we do is um, this ain't just, it may be the Alex Toussaint brand, but it's not just my shit. Like they put in so much sacrificing and time that it's our shit. Right. So like I may be the face of it, but like I don't, they don't answer to me. I don't answer to them. We answer to each other. Like, and I think that has been the, the pivot point which has allowed me to keep that balance. So me not lose track, me not go crazy, me not get money or fame and like forget, lose or forget who I am. Having a core group of individuals around you to keep you humble is a key to this shit. Having family around you is a key to this shit. Yeah, without them, man, I don't think I would go crazy because I have a certain level of discipline already in place, but for any time I go a little bit off track or just I get close to that edge of just doing some stupid shit, I have a good group around me that keeps me close by, man, for and, sure. And, bro, I got I, one in the follow-up. <laughs> oh, Lord. Why y'all laughing? Because we know where you're going. You know where you're going. <laughs> what do you, like, what are you looking at when you're, go, you know, teaching the classes? Yeah. Can you see your participants? Because I'm sure there's some bad ones in there. <laughs> like, can, like do you, do you, can you see individuals? So when they come into the studio, I can see you right in front of me. It's like yeah. live production. It's 45 bikes, I believe. So yeah, I can see every single person that's in there. You can see every person. I can see every person in there. That is better than Tinder. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I never had a Tinder. OK, but like, yeah. but like, bro, I used to have to go to the mall okay. to find something. Yeah, good on like, that. Bro, could you look at? The rider 44 and be like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Yeah, like, yeah, of course. You, you are going to, it's people that are in shape. Yes, sir. Beautiful women. Yes, sir. You see the motivation. Yes, sir. They love you because yes, they stand at your ass. You count one, two, one, two. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, sir. Is there, is there, have you ever used the job to, 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 I got, a, I got the perfect response moving. for that. The perfect response for that. If I did, I wouldn't be here today. One. Mm -hmm. And two, discipline over distractions. I'm not going to yeah. come this far in life and just like, no disrespect to all the beautiful women that come to class. Yeah. Nobody worth what I've come this far and built, to be honest with you. Really? You, I'm a human being. I'm a man. Yeah. There's thousands of beautiful women that come to Peloton classes. Yeah. But when you move with intention of respect, you ain't worried about none of that. And that's why I think people feel so safe with me. I got And you. That's, it's a beautiful part of what I'm able to do is like, I never want somebody to come to class. I always think about this of like, a woman coming to class, going back to her husband or her boyfriend, being like, oh, I love him. Homie being like, let me go see who he, let me go see what my woman go like. <laughs> so I got to size homie up. Yeah. And then thinking about like, how can I get two for one? How can I get you to go home, grab your boyfriend or husband, him come to class with this energy of like, let me see what this dude on and walk out like, yo, that's my guy. Right. That's always yeah. been the motto. And that's why we've been successful this far. Damn. And yeah. you ain't in no relationships or nothing? Uh, behind the scenes, I keep my shit private. Oh, okay. Yeah, bro. It's, Does I just she so, ride? I give so much of myself <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he was right. He was teed up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I need me a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it is, bro. I give so much, and RC and Fred will tell you, I give so much of myself to the people, man. That like you got to keep something for yourself. Mm. You can't give everything to everybody. Social media, they gonna take that and run with it. Mm. I'm a human being. I look at the comments. That shit do affect me over time. I'm not yeah. built. I'm a, I'm a regular individual, yeah. Yeah. so I protect the shit that I care about. To quote my man Big Sean, guard your heart, protect your energy. And that's just what I, I stand on. So that's why I'm able to just stay happy because I don't give everybody that, from the outside world my inside life. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to see where I live, where I'm sleeping at, who I'm dating. I don't want you to see none of that shit. Nah. I, life is great. Let me rock. <laughs> so um, Mr. Tucson, going yes, back to military school, you've come a long way, bro. You know, you talk about respect. You talk about discipline. You know, earlier you spoke about your grandmother going back to Haiti yes, and burying your grandmother in 2018. Did she get an opportunity to see, mm. you know, the, the the real Alex? You know, what she wanted you to be? And if so, with that, what is she looking down saying right now? So I love that you asked this question because when my grandma was sick and everybody started making their way down to Haiti to pay the final respects, um, I was coordinating with my mother and my, my family of like, all right, when we going down, like I called my boss like, yo, my grandma, about to, I got to slide. Like, I, I got to go. Like, you know, if it's a bus, I called my teammates like, yo, I can't be here. My grandma called my mom and told her, she calls me Lex, my family calls me Lex. She was like, yo, tell him I'm not going nowhere, finish his duties, I'll be right here. Wow. So she kind of was like, yo, don't come down here until I'm gone. Wow. Handle your business up there. You got a responsibility to this community, to the people out there. Handle your business and then come down when the time is right. 
So while my cousin all went down before I did, I kind of was using that week to just like, off the motivation of grandma being like, yo, she asked me to stay up here and do my job, I'm gonna stay up here and do my job. And we fast forward now, um, I don't want to sound selfish to my family when I say this, but my life has gotten significantly easier since she's passed away. And I say that because I feel like I have this guardian angel from up top now okay. just guiding me through life. Like, decisions are just so much more easier. Understanding what I want out of life is a lot more easier. Yo, don't go left. Go right. Yo, slow down for a second. Take a pause. Breathe. Yo, you're moving too fast. Call, like, certain things have just been so much more fluid since she's passed away, and it's because she's guiding me from up, north, up top right now. So, um, yeah, man, praise to my grandma, man. Praise to my grandma. I say a prayer every time before I teach. If you, if you notice the first 10 seconds right before I go live, I just say a quick prayer to just keep her in my, in my thoughts for the 30 or 45 minutes that I'm teaching. So, you know, I've been fired up about this, you know, since I reached out the first time. I was actually more fired up that you even answered my DM. Cause you know, sometimes you jump in DMs and you're yeah. like, man, am I gonna be stuck in the request folder? So that was the yeah. first thing, but I, no, I'm just saying, I, it not bothers to cut me. You, not to cut you off, can I tell you why I responded so quick? And this awesome, you know, I'm very much about giving people their flowers in real time. This is a validating moment for me, bro. And I say this as like my, I wanted to be a pro athlete my entire life. We didn't do that. But we push enough pedal strokes to be in the space of greatness where it's like, that's fucking crazy to me. Like, I'll be real with you. Like you talk about like, isn't it crazy? It's like, yo, it's fucking crazy. We push enough pedal strokes to have an opportunity to sit down in front of greats and speak about our life. So yeah, that shit is crazy to me. Bro. Nah, but so that, well, I was, I was getting to that though, like, you know, and this is usually Fred's part. It's gonna be my part today, man. Like we don't, a lot of times we set out to do our passions with ourselves in mind, mm -hmm. right? Because it's something we love to do. It's a place we enjoy being and it allows us to escape. For us who have busy lives or maybe sometimes when I don't have a lot going on, like that's a time where I'm locked in to doing one thing for 30 minutes or for 45 minutes. And I feel like the person I'm looking at, it matters as much to that person as it does to me what I get out of it. Like, I never look at you and think to myself, this dude's doing this for him, yeah. right? He's not gonna put this much work into a playlist. He's not gonna put this much work or this much energy into just himself. Yeah. And I think that resonates anytime I take a class. I believe the other part of it is too, man, is that your experience shaped you for us. Mm -hmm. And I think as you continue to go forward, continue to remember that people are literally watching you. You know what I'm saying? Not it's not not like figuratively, no, like sir, you know how sir. your mom would say they're watching you. Nah, no, like people you. are literally watching you, and you affect parts of their day, and then they go talk about you to other people. So it was important that we had an opportunity to sit with you for me, for sure. And I, for one, am glad you weren't six four. <laughs> so we appreciate what you do. No. So right. thank you, though. It's an honor. Man, appreciate you. Yes, yes, sir, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just love it. Thank you, my brother. Love love. Love. Bro, that tape, that tape, that tape. <laughs> that bitch is a laser tape. <laughs> you say what? Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the bitch, you not to trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission.